We are once again in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 8, beginning with verse 16 through 18. Luke 8, 16 through 18. <clears throat> No one lights a lamp and then covers it with a bowl or hides it under a bed. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. For all that is secret will eventually be brought into the open and everything that is concealed will be brought to light and made known to all. So pay attention to how you hear to those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Thanks be Thanks God. Pray with me, please. <laughs> Holy God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. May it bring you glory. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> a few weeks ago, in the, in the busy city of Garrison, Texas, <laughs> uh, a lady was pulled over by the cops. And uh, when they began to inquire, that she was weaving on the road out of there in Garrison. And they, they thought she was drunk. <clears throat> so they pulled her over. And when they got to the window, the lady was crying. And uh, they said, ma'am, you know, the reason we pulled you over is because you were weaving on the road. And, uh, and she began to say, well, officer, the reason that I'm weaving is I'm upset. I just left the cemetery of where my daughter was buried two years ago. And I've just come from the cemetery, and I'm, I'm upset. <clears throat> And the officer said, well, ma'am, you can't be on the highway like this. So uh, can you just find somewhere to pull over and get out and walk around until you can kind of kind of get, get hold of yourself before you get back on the road and head uh, to Nacogdoches where she's leaving? Well, she did that. Y'all, there, there are broken people all around us. It may not be obvious on their face. They may not be breaking down and weeping like this woman. They may not be pulled over by the police. It may not be that obvious. But all around you, wherever you are, people are broken. People are going through divorce, or, or their children are ill, or they're having financial difficulty. There, there, there's all manner of, of, of strife and struggles that, that people are going through in this world. And many of them aren't even really aware that they're hurting. They're in denial about it. They, they cover it up so well, they don't even know themselves. And they blunder forward. God has set those who believe in His Son, Jesus, to be lights in the darkness. In this passage of Scripture, Jesus kind of reiterates what, what we talked about last week with the sowing of the seeds and, and producing fruit. He comes at it from a different angle here right here. Turn your light on. Turn it on. This, nobody lights a candle and puts it under a basket. That doesn't make sense, does it? I mean, why would you even light it in the first place? We live, in a, we live in a world nowadays, y'all. It's not like it was 40, 50 years ago. Y'all don't need me to tell you that, do you? 
Uh, it's, it's changed. Well, I, yeah, y'all are right here. Uh, well, uh, I believe if, I, if memory serves me right, in 19, I believe it's 1989, there was a, a, a change in our society. Business, the business, the, the, the amount of money spent on technology in 1989 came to be over half of the expenses that were the corporations spent, which was a big deal. Rather than resources and tangible stuff, it was spent on technology. And, and that was a creeping thing that happened, and it, and it overwhelmed. And it's been way more than that ever since. I mean, technology. Do I need to say any more about that? YouTube, Facebook, Pinterest. What's some of those other ones? Instagram. Now Instagram's kind of the new thing for, for a lot of younger folks and all that. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, you get to read the newspaper. I mean, it's changed everything, y'all. And, and uh, it's called a postmodern world. It was considered the modern era until that, from like the 1500s until then. And since then, we've been considered by people that study that stuff, sociologists, all that sort of thing. It's the postmodern. We're in the postmodern era. And they really still kind of try to grapple with what that looks like because it's so early on. We don't really know. It's kind of this, but there are, there are some characteristics that are out there that you can see and recognize right now. Uh, it's infected our society and is, here's one, one, one of the things that, that people born in that era from the, the late 80s to today one of their attitudinal, attitudinal changes you might recognize is there are many paths to God. And it's okay. If you're a Buddhist, hey, if that's your path, that's fine. If you're Muslim, that's your path, that's fine. You know, there, there is no, no real truth. It's truth as you see it individually. Does that make sense? Are you starting to, is the lights going on now? And that has pervaded our society and now you can see that played out in the corporate world. Witnessing for Christ is a no-no. You can't do it anymore. You can't put a, 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 a nativity scene on the courthouse lawn. Anymore. You know, I mean, it's, it's, it's played out in a gazillion different scenarios. But that's, it's, it's caused us, in a sense, as Americans, as American Christians, to cover our land. In a sense. You know, we're not, we're not, everybody isn't a Christian anymore like we were, thought everybody was back in the 60s and all. It's changed. <clears throat> and it, it it seems like the only, only Christians who really kind of stand up oftentimes are the fundamentalists that kind of take a, 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 an extreme standpoint like uh, protesting at those funerals for our military men and women because and, and saying you got what you deserved because of what's going on in our country. You know, I mean, it's like, ooh. So, so oftentimes when we think to stand up as a Christian, people associate us with the extremist sort of viewpoint. And I'm saying to y'all, we need to stand up and be a moderate view, <laughs> a more moderate view that, that projects authentic Christianity into wherever we're at. Be real. We don't have to be a fundamentalist. We don't have to, you know, be extremist and, and be against anybody. We just, we're for loving everybody, okay? And, and we don't, you know, beat people down with, a, with the Bible. 
Christ is imploring us to turn on an authentic faith light where we are. Make sense? Okay. Matthew. All right, this comes back to your tune it in. Tune in. Uh, we have control over how we respond to, to the message of Christ, to God's Word. It says in this passage of Scripture, pay attention to how you hear. The, the title of this message is I See Why Am I. And that's Twitter lingo uh, for in case you missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, so uh, I figured I didn't know that until I started doing the research for this message. In case you miss it, uh, Jesus is kind of saying, in case you missed what I just said, here I'm going to put it out to you again. And pay attention to how you listen, because it does matter. You know, if, if we're listening with a heart that's hardened and we're listening like the Pharisees did to Jesus trying to find something we can hold him accountable for or criticize him about what Christ is saying is uh, those people are going to end up being distanced from the message because of the way they're listening they're not listening to, to understand and embrace. They're listening to criticize and hold accountable. So if we embrace and commit to what Christ is speaking to us through His Word, we will gain immeasurably. When we truly listen, we grow in understanding. When we truly listen, we draw closer to God. When we truly listen, we become open to the Holy Spirit's movement in our heart and life. When we truly listen, we learn to walk by faith. When we truly listen, we tune in to God. When we truly listen, we turn on our lights. But if we refuse to listen, we will distance ourselves from the truth. A few years, well, a number of years ago now, I guess, time kind of gets away. I guess it was 2001. I just started, I've been preaching part-time. I was working as a forester for, uh, at that time, international paper. Felt God's call to, you know, ministry. And I was trying, still trying to, you know, how's this going to play out? Um, Abba Tibi had bought the Lefkin paper mill. And they were looking for a procurement manager. And I went and interviewed for the job. And there were two guys there, a guy named Ron that was, uh, I guess, the plant manager, and then a wood yard foreman that I interviewed with. They, they pulled, both those guys came in, sat down, and we began a, a conversation. And, of course, they were trying to figure out who I was and what I was bringing to the table and all that. Now, I was, uh, well... God was working in my heart big time about then, and I was beginning to see the picture that it didn't matter what I wanted. Yeah, I'd love to be a procurement manager. I'd be that, that was kind of my, my all-time dream, you know, was to be a procurement manager. Right? After I, you know, when I graduated from college and all that, that's what I wanted to do. So this would have been my dream job, okay? But at the same time, I also knew I wanted God's will done, regardless. And I said that in the interview. I mean, don't, don't go. I'm not suggesting you do that. That's that was uh, that was a very. But hey, I was just. That's where I was, and I was like, hey, if y'all like it, fine. If you don't, that's okay too. But. They were asking me, uh, what, what do you, why do you want this job and all this? And I'm like, hey, I can do this job. I know I can do it. But I want what God wants for me to do. I'm trying to follow God's will. If he wants me to have this job, fine. If he doesn't, that's okay too. How you respond, okay, 
Now, playing back to that, it jarred them. I dare say they'd never heard that before in an interview. The woodyard foreman reached over, grabbed his hard hat, put it on his head, stood up, and walked out the door. Left me and, and Ron, you know. Ron was kind of stunned, I think, and uh, we went on with the interview, you know. I mean, he pretended to go on with the interview. I mean, it was a moot point at that at that point, you know. It was, but he went on, and he he was nice, and, and I think he kind of doubled over backwards to be nice after that, you know. <laughs> but you know, the the a funny thing happened toward the end of it. He said, you know. My wife and I haven't gone to church in a long time. I said, why haven't you gone to church? He said, well, you know, we work real hard. And, you know, I, I have a lot of work, and I just kind of put myself into my work. I said, Ron, you need God in your life, and you need to be going to church. And I don't care which church you go to. But I encourage you to go get plugged in somewhere. Didn't get the job. Surprise. Hello. Less than two years later, the mill was shut down. As you well know, if you're from around these parts. So, you know, did I lose anything? See, we don't know what God knows. And we get all upset sometimes about we don't get our way. Well, you know what? God's looking out for you. Maybe it's best you don't get your way. <laughs> and, 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 but I've got an opportunity to bear witness to a guy. I don't know what he did with it. I don't know if he was listening. If he was, he followed the Lord's will for him and, and, and got plugged into a church somewhere and became active. I don't know. I haven't seen him, as far as I recall, to this day from that. All right, Matthew. <clears throat> turn it up. Not only turn your light on and, and, and tune in to God, but, but turn it up. Jesus says in the middle of this passage, hey, you know what? All secrets are going to be revealed in the end, so what are you worried about? Don't be worried about being a, a secret Christian, a closet Christian, and, and not, you know, share that with your friends and, and those around you that don't know you real well. Don't, what are you worried about? It, it's all going to come out in the end anyhow. That's what he's trying to say. So quit being self-conscious about being a, a follower of Jesus Christ. Let your light shine without obscuring the view. Christ wants you to express your faith as we listen to him. I was at a ball game over here at Central Heights Tuesday night, I believe it was. Elkhart, we were playing Elkhart, I think it was this week. Might have been the week before. Um, at the end of the game, I mean, it was a, you know, there was, it was 30 point difference in the game, you know. At, at, at the last two minutes, I believe it was Elkhart put, uh, Put a little Down syndrome young man in the game. This was the JV team. And uh, they got him the ball. And he shoots and he misses. And they give him the ball back and he shoots and he misses. And the Central Heights boy catches the ball and he hands it to him and he shoots and he misses until he they keep giving him the ball. And they did that until that kid made at least two baskets in the last two minutes. And everybody there on both sides cheered for this Down Syndrome young man. Now, to me, that was better than, than, than us winning the game. I don't know what would have happened if it had been a two-point game, you know, probably would have been different. Shouldn't have been. Really. But I think that, that ministered to that kid, you know. 
in a way that he'll remember, you know. And, and if it didn't speak to the hearts of the people sitting in the stands, they missed it. You know, they just flat missed it. You never know when God's going to give you an opportunity to, to bear witness for him. The, the, the lady that I was telling you all about that uh, got pulled over by the cops in Garrison, <clears throat> she found her a place to pull over. She stopped at Top Notch. And she walks in there, tears still streaming down her face. My mother-in-law, Nancy, was there. <clears throat> Nancy, who had lost her husband, her mother, and her daughter within an 18-day period of time, six and a half years ago. She was waiting for her. Didn't know she was coming in. But here comes this lady, broken-hearted, Matthew. <clears throat> she made some coffee and they sat down and they talked for over an hour. And Nancy told her before she left, said, God brought you in here to me so that we could meet. Turn your light on. Amen. Don't be ashamed. Be open to allowing God to use you in whatever way suits Him, and He will bring people to you. Even when you don't expect it. Maybe when you're busy and you ain't got time for it. Just look out. Because He wants us to to turn on our light, to tune in to Him and listen to Him, embrace Him, and, and, and to not be afraid to bear witness for Him. He's in control anyhow. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about everything. It's all going to work out. And if you're trusting in Him, it's going to work out for your good. And maybe, just maybe, you'll bear fruit for Christ in somebody else's life. It's really not that complicated. <laughs> it's very simple. Amen.